Hey everyone, I had an email this week from Priya who asked me to go over projecting this statement to the population when we're sampling. So let's just go back over some quick basics. Sampling is when I have my population of transactions or invoices and instead of testing the entire population to go away and form my audit opinion about whether an account is materially misstated or not, I pick out individual transactions and then I project on the level of misstatement based on this small sample. Okay, so I'm taking one, two, three, four, five, six, six transactions there. And then I'm extrapolating the results to the full population. Now, of course, our sampling makes particular assumptions. Most importantly, that our sample is what we call representative. Now, representative is really important. It means that our sample has the same characteristics as the population. So if I've got 75% you know, large transactions, then 75% of my sample should be from those large transactions. So once we've selected our sample, then we go away, we test, we gather data, and then we typically use a simple formula, which is the audited errors, divided by the book value of the sample, all right, multiplied by the book value of the population. However, Priya's question relates to what happens when we use stratification. So stratification is when I take my population and I break it into chunks. So I've written a little example here. I need a different colored pen. So I've got a company here where I've got a range of transactions, 250,000 or more, uh, 150,000 to 249,999, 100,000 to 149,999, 50,000 to 999,000, 999 and then less than 49,999. So these could be sales transactions, it could be accounts receivable, it could be purchases, it could be anything. So I've broken it up into these different strata. I've got the book values for each of those stratas, the book values for the samples, and then I've gone away, select my sample, and then got the audited results. So what do I do next? How do I ex project my population. The simple way would be, and let's quickly add up the book value of my sample here, 2 million plus 1.5 million plus 975 plus 425 plus 47,250. Pardon me. So, my book value of my total sample is 4,947,250. Okay, and then I've got my actual audited figures. So what I need to figure out is the amount of overstatement. All right, and so I do that by taking the book value of the sample minus my audited amount. So my first one is 105,000 overstated. Then my one after that, oops, is 75,000 overstated. Then my next one is 15,000. Then 10,000, 
and then six thousand seven hundred and fifty. All right, so let's add all those up. Six seven five ten thousand. So we've got 211,750 worth of error found within our sample. But how do I project this to the population? The most accurate way to do that is to project the amount of overstatement within each of these individual strata. So I'm going to actually need another bit of paper. Let me move this one across a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my overstatement, divide it by the book value of the sample, all right, and then multiply it by the strata. Now, I only need to do that where I've selected a sample, but what you'll notice here is that the book value of the sample and the book value of the strata for the two largest are exactly the same. All right, so in that situation, I've actually tested... 100% of the strata population. All right, so if I look at my projection over here, for my first two, I actually don't need to do any calculations. My projection is the actual amount that I found. Okay, however, for my next two, it's a slightly different matter. So, let's get my calculator out. 15,000 divided by my book value of the sample, 975,000. Gives me about 1.5% rate of error times 2 million. So that's 30,769. So let's do our next one. 10,000 worth of error. My calculator somewhere where you can see it. 10,000 worth of error divided by 425,000 multiplied by 1 million. Alright, so here we have $23,529 worth of error. And then in my very last one, Uh, we've got 6,750 divided by 47,250 multiplied by 500,000. 71,429. I'll just round up to the nearest dollar there. Okay, so I've got my statements of 105, 75, 37, 6, 9, 23, 5, 2, 9, 7, 1, 4, 2, 9. Okay, so we've got a projection of $305,727 of potential misstatement and I know for a fact that 211,750 that is real because we've actually identified real errors here. Now let's see what would happen if we actually did this calculation the other way. I took, what if I took my overstatement divided by my total 
book value here, multiply it by my total population. 211,750 divided by 4947250 multiplied by 7 million. Okay, so using the traditional non-strata formula we get $299,611 so we'll notice there that there's a slight difference of about $6,000 in the actual projected misstatement the more accurate way to do our misstatement of course is to do it per strata of course, before we actually go ahead and we present any of this information to the client, the thing we'd want to do is make sure that we investigate what is the cause for each of these misstatements where I'm making a projection. Is it centred on a particular staff member, a customer, were they one-off mistakes or were they systematic errors? Of course, if they're systematic errors, we're going to need to go away and do further testing. So when we're projecting the statements to the population, obviously there's a quite an easy formula, but when we're using stratification, make sure you calculate your projection per the individual strata.